Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how we can do camera tracking and place CGI characters into live footage using Blender easily. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that if you end up liking this video please click on that like button to share this content and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing my channel and support me. And by the way if you like short 3D simulation videos you can check out my second channel link in the description. So now without any further ado let's start today's video. So here I'm using Blender 3.1 nice. So first of all click on this plus icon here come to this VFX and select this motion tracking. So from here we can load our footage so simply click on this open button and select the footage. So here I got this footage now click on this open clip. So here you can see we got this clip loaded. So first of all come to this render properties scroll down come to this color management and change this to standard so this is the true colors okay so after that come to this output properties so here by default this frame start and end is set to 1 to 250 so first of all we need to set the scene frames so simply click on this set scene frames here you can see this has got updated now 1 2 3 15 frames which is the actual frames of my footage which are shot and next we need to adjust or make this fps equal so here the frame rate is 24 but my footage is of 29.97 so let me change this to 29.97 so once this is done now click on this prefetch button so this will load the footage frames into the cache memory so that we can preview this one freely so here you can say we got all the frames loaded into the cache memory and by the way if it is not loaded completely come to this edit preferences click on the system here we need to increase the memory cache limit so by default it will be set to 4 gigs or something so since my lab got 16 gb i have increased this limit to 7505 so depending upon the ram availability increase this memory cache then the complete frames will be loaded here okay so once the frames are loaded into the cache memory we can now freely get the preview here nice so first of all let me track the footage since the camera is not static here so here you can see we got this camera movements here so since the camera is not static first we need to track the camera so this is what we are going to learn today how to track this camera so for that we can add markers manually or we can let the blender to decide the features so if you want to let the blender decide the tracker points you can click on this detect features so here you can see we got some markers added here after that click on this track markers or else you can press ctrl plus t so this will track all the markers here here you can see few of the tracks are missing so we can delete them later so here i will not be showing or i will not be doing this automatically i will do this manual so let me undo all these things so now i will add the markers manually so first of all let me select the contrasted areas here so here this is contrast area so in order to add track markers hold ctrl key and left mouse click so we got a track marker added so now press alt and s for search region so you can see this track marker clearly on this track position so click on this track panel so from here we can adjust the track position also so i think this is fine and let me increase the tracking area a bit okay so now let me track this one so press ctrl plus t to track the whole footage so if i let me increase this here so that all the frames are visible okay so here the tracking is completed throughout the timeline and if i scroll backwards you can see the track point is staying in its position nice so now come to the starting frame and let me lock the track marker here by pressing ctrl plus l to avoid any accidental movement so here like this we need to track another seven tracker marks so blender requires minimum eight track points so let me add another seven so here i got this track marker so hold ctrl key and left click and let me adjust this one now press ctrl plus t to track so this is also done now lock this one ctrl plus l to lock the track point so in this way let me add another six track markers here so here this tracking data is getting off so let me move one frame backward 
So till this frame, I want this track data. So press E on the keyboard and select this clear track path. So till 164th frame, we will have the track data. After that, we won't have the track data. So let me lock this one also. So here I have added more than eight track points. So let me unlock all of them. So in order to unlock, press A on the keyboard to select all the track points. Now press Alt and L to unlock them. Okay. So here you can see we got more than eight track points here. So now let's solve the camera. So come to this solve options and just click on this solve camera motion. So here you can see our solve error is of 1.11 pixels. So we need to have a solve error less than one pixels. So this is not acceptable now. So let's clear some tracking data. So in order to get tracking error or average error of each motion track, come to the script display and enable this info option. So from this, if I select any of the track point, we'll get the error. So this is average error is 2.87. So let me delete this tracker and now let me solve the camera once again. So now it is 1.04. So here I got this track point error with 1.98 pixels. So let me delete this one and let me solve the camera. So now we got a solve error of 0.89 pixels, which is acceptable. So further, if you want to reduce the tracking error, we can manually check the track markers and we can delete the tracker that has maximum error value, or you can add some more track points and we can reduce the solve error. So for this tutorial, I think this is fine. I will go with this 0.89 pixels. So less than one pixel is good and less than 0.5 will be much better. So now we need to set this scene as background. So further scroll down and click on this setup tracking scene. So here you can see we got our scene in this viewport. So now let me change this to layout. So here we are not able to see the footage. So in order to get this footage visible, click on this camera icon here. So now we can see our footage. So I think the alignment is proper here. So for example, if the alignment of this 3D objects is not matching with the scene, we need to align the alignment by using the camera. First of all, we need to set an origin point. So in order to set the origin point, let me enable this motion tracking, enable this camera markers, marker nails, and the camera path if you want to have this camera path you can do so i will disable this one so let me come to this motion tracking once again and let me select this marker here and let me set this as an origin point so select single marker and click on this set origin so now this is an origin point you can see the let me show you so here you can see the cube and plane has moved to this origin point. So now let me select this plane and let me set the cube and let me increase the scaling here. Okay. So for this scene, the alignment is proper. If it is not proper for your video, select the camera and we need to adjust the camera alignment along with the footage. So let me press R, Y and from here we can rotate it like this. R X and so I think this is fine. Press G X. So let it be here. Press G Y and let it be here. Okay. So now let me hide out these track names. So come to this marker names and motion tracking. Now let me hide out this ground plane here and let me select the cube. So now as we are placing our 3D model or 3D object onto the floor, we need to set this cube onto the grid here. So currently this is not on the grid. So if I come away from this camera, you can see our grid is in the middle. So let me select this cube and select this move tool, hold control key and move our cube here so that it will be aligned properly onto this grid okay so now this is looking good again click on this camera so now you can see our cube is at the top of the grid that is on the floor 
So now if I play this, you can see that our cube is staying in its position, which indicates our tracking is good. Nice. So now let me add out this cube. Okay. So now let me import a CG character along with the animation. So if you want to learn how to add motion captured animations onto the 3D characters, you can check out this video, which is available in the link in the description, or else you can click on the I card above. Okay. So now let me import that character. So go to this file. It is an FBX file. So import, select this FBX and let me select this one and import. Make sure the animation is checked in and import. So here you can see we got this character. So let me rotate this one. Okay. And let me scale this up. So I think this much is fine. And also let me place this character here. I think I need to reduce the scaling. So, okay. So this is fine. So this character I have downloaded from Sketchfab. So download link in the description for this character also. You can download that character and add animations using Mixamo. You can check this tutorial link in the description. If I select this armature, you can see we got only 144 frames here. So our animation lasts for 144 frames. After that, there will be no animation. So in order to get the animations looped out, click on this icon here and change this to non-linear animation. Click on this drop down action button. After that, press N on the keyboard here. Let me expand this one. Click on this strip, scroll down, action clip, and increase this repeat value. So now let me move back to this timeline. Okay. So let me hide out the armature now. And now if I play this, we'll have that animation throughout the timeline. Okay. So now if I move on to this material viewport, our character has got the texture. So while downloading only, we'll get that texture. So we need to apply them now. So select this character, click on the sharing tab. Now click on this plus icon here. So now select this principal BSDF and press control plus T. And by the way, if you're not enable node wrangler, go to this edit preferences, come to this add-ons and look for node. So by default, this node wrangler will be unchecked, enable it, save the preferences here and we can close them. After that, select this principal BSDF and press Ctrl plus T. So from here, we can select the texture. So click on this open. So here we got this base color. So open image. So now we can see we got the texture onto this group character. So now let us apply normal map also. So select this node wrangler. Duplicate it by pressing shift plus D. Place it below here. And now let's add a normal map. So shift A search as normal. Select this normal map. Now connect this color to color and this normal to normal. So here we need to select the normal map. So click on this two number. So here you can see we got number here. So click on that or else we can close this one. And again, we can select the normal map. So again, open our textures. Here is the normal map. Select the normal map, open image. And in this color space, change this to non-color. Now from here, we can increase or decrease the strength. So I think this much strength is fine. And now let's move back to this layout. So now we got some normal map added onto the character. Okay. So now let's work on the shadows. So in order to work on the shadows, first we need to move on to the render viewport. So now come to this render viewport here. So right now the scene is looking dark because we have only single light here. So here you can see we got this single light here. So in order to get the realism, we need to add an HDRI. So actually we need to have a 360 image. So since I don't have a 360 image, I will be using the same footage. So come to this world properties, click on this color, environment texture. So from here, select the footage, open and let me select the footage only and open image. So now we got the HDRA, not actual HDRA. I have loaded the image only, footage only. So now come to this render properties, 
enable ambient occlusion let me increase the distance to 10 and come to this film options make it transparent so now we got some lighting in the scene in this render viewport so in order to get shadows here we need to add a sunlight and also we need to add a ground plane though we have this ground plane in the background we are not using that so we can hide out this in render viewport and we can hide out this cube in render viewport or else we will get this cube and plane visible in the render okay so now let's add a ground plane so go to this add mesh select a plane here now press s on the keyboard and increase the scaling and as soon as I have added the plane, you can see the shadows. So now let me select this light. So this is light. So come to this light properties. So this is set to point and the power value is set to 1000 watts. So let me change this to sun. And let me reduce the strength to 2. And now let me rotate the direction here. Press R and rotate. R, X and rotate. So I will place this here. Okay. And... In order to make this as shadow catcher, we need to move to this render engine and change this to cycles. So it is better to have render this in cycles only. So device select GPU if you have, if your device got GPU and select the plane, come to this visibility options, visibility and enable the shadow catcher so that we'll get only shadows visible here. Okay. So in EV, we will have our plane visible so make sure we render this out in cycles only so come to this light let me select the light once again light and let me reduce the strength to one and also angle i think let me reduce this to 10 and bounce maximum bounce i'll reduce this to 10 it is enough and okay so now everything is fine so let me come to this let me bring it here press r y and okay let the shadows be like this only so since there are no shadows in this footage you can see the shadows are not that much properly visible here i'm adding just to show how we can add the shadows in the scene here okay so once this is done we can render the scene out so come to this render properties render engine select cycles Enable GP if you got that and also enable this denoise option. So maximum samples this is set to 4096 which takes a hell lot of time. So I will reduce this to 7. 7 is enough. So maximum samples for viewport also I will reduce to 7. So this is render samples and this is viewport samples. So viewport samples doesn't matter that much. We, were, we are looking only for render. So render let the maximum samples be 7 enable this denoise option so after that come to this output properties so from here enable this render region crop to region and let me reduce the percentage to 50 so that the render will be a bit fast frame start and end it's okay now let me select an output folder so here i have selected an output folder and first of all let me save the project first let me save I'll save this as Groot okay so after that file format you can choose directly video format here but I prefer to render this in images so I will select this JPEG okay and image sequence overwrite if you want to overwrite the existing images you can do that or else you can uncheck this one I will leave this to overwrite only so after that if everything looks fine just click on this render and click on this render animation so this may take time depending upon this machine configurations and the samples what we have set here so in this way we can add our cga characters in live footage using blender easily so hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial if you have learned anything new please like share and subscribe my channel to support me so we'll meet in the next video until then signing off take care bye